And if I can jump ahead a little bit, Tyler, I love, you know, we've been studying a lot about the Abrahamic covenant this year in the Old Testament, and that through Israel, all the families of the earth are to be blessed. God loves this family and this covenant line, but he loves them because they're helping spread his goodness and his invitation to everybody. And you even see that, I'm going to jump to, to 45, starting in verse 20, uh, 45 verses 20 through 25, God stop, pauses for a minute talking to Israel, and he talks to the defeated Babylonians who just got their country crushed, and, and all the other Gentile nations, everyone who's not part of Israel, and he makes invitations to them to trust him and come to him too. He says, assemble yourselves and come, draw near together that ye, ye that are escaped or the survivors of the nations. They that have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray to unto God that can't save. So these, these people that before didn't know about Jehovah, did not worship him, um, he invites them. In verse 21, he says, I'm the Lord, there is no God beside me, a just God and a Savior, there's none beside me. Verse 22, look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. And in verse 23, he, pr he promises that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. In verse 24, surely in the future one shall say, in the Lord and Jehovah I have righteousness and strength, even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Um, and I, I love this invitation there, that it's not just Israel he's trying to save. He's trying to use this event, the fall of Babylon, to say, hey, look what I did for these people, and all of you come as well. And there's other hints elsewhere in the book of Isaiah that this miraculous act that God does of saving his people from captivity and bringing them home actually produces some Gentile converts, that people see this and go, wow, this God is incredible. Let me, let me come. Um, you know, and today, as, as God works with modern Israel, I hope that we're constantly pointing out to people, look what God has done for the Latter-day Saints. Look at our history. Look at the temples being built. Look at the wonderful ways that he's blessing us and that we kind of let that light shine and let them come through that. So I, th I think it's just wonderful that he makes stops and makes that invitation here. And can I just point out here this, this idea that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear, exactly as Josh is saying, it's not just only Israelite tongues will will confess this, and only uh, Judahite knees are going to bow. No, it's every knee and every tongue. Notice what happens in the New Testament in the epistle to the Philippians. Paul picks up on this, this exact phrase from chapter 45, verse 23. Listen to this. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Did you notice that? Paul's saying it's at the name of Jesus every knee is going to bow down and confess these things. Well, you tie back here, we're speaking of the Lord Jehovah in the Old Testament, so it's this beautiful connection of Jehovah of the Old, Jesus of the New, there's no other name given under heaven. There, there's no means nor way whereby we can get back into the presence of God or become who we need to become following any of these other gods or any of these other traditions or movements. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Whether you're in the Old Testament or the New Testament, it's fun to see those, those connections of how a prophet in the New Testament is taking old things and then updating it for his audience to say, we're talking about Jesus. And that's why Lehi's, you know, says how great the importance to make these things known unto the inhabitants of the earth. Everyone's going to know this eventually. I remember President Eyring sharing that in the spirit world, eventually all your friends, all your neighbors, they're all going to know what you know now, and they will remember whether you offered it to them. <laughs> I remember hearing that and thinking, oh my goodness, <laughs> I need to do better at this because you know, right now we might be nervous, we might be scared to share the gospel, but eventually everyone's going to know this, and it, it, it's wonderful to share with them what he's doing so they can receive those blessings. And if they have a polite decline right now, that's fine. They'll eventually know it and at least they'll appreciate, you know, the, the foundation that you tried to lay earlier.